Hey folks, it's Nick with Bootstrap Farmer. Last week on November 15th, 2023, the USDA announced a new plant hardiness zone map. In this video, we're going to explain what has changed and what has remained the same. So like anything these days, the announcement was made and social media was upset and confused about it. So our take here at Bootstrap Farmer is you need to think about the United States as one big garden. Some plants do well in the cold and some plants do well in the heat. The plant hardiness zone map basically divides the United States into 13 zones. Those zones are based on the average annual extreme minimum temperature. And I can't stress this enough that it's the average annual extreme minimum temperature. Not the highest that it has ever been, not the lowest temperature recorded in those areas. Each one of the zones is divided into A and B categories, and the difference between the two is 5 degrees. So for instance, if you're in zone 7, 7A would have a winter low temperature of 0 to 5 degrees, while 7B would be 5 to 10 degrees. These subzones allow growers to pick crop variety selections that may do a little bit better between those two cold zones. So if you live in zone 3, you'll want to get plants that can handle the cold, but if you're in zone 10, you'll look for plants that can handle hotter weather. So what's new? The last time the map was updated was 2012, and this was gathered from data from 7,983 weather stations. The 2023 map was made from data from 13,412 weather stations. That's 5,429 more weather stations spread out across the country. And there's been significant changes to Alaska, Hawaii, and Puerto Rico. With more weather stations being installed in those outlying regions, growers are able to pinpoint exactly what they're able to do. The other big change is in 2012, the map had a resolution of six and a quarter miles. In 2023, the resolution has been dialed down to just a quarter of a mile. And you can see in this example that in areas that have converging growing zones, it really helps to pinpoint even a farm across the street. This is a picture of our friends at the Side Yard Farm in Portland, Oregon. This is the 2012 map version, resolution of six and a quarter miles. And this is the 2023 map at a quarter of a mile. And there's the farm we're going to look at. On this page, we see how in that neighborhood, the side yard farm lies in between a little cutout between zone 8A and 8B. Another new feature is you're able to increase and decrease the transparency in the plant hardiness zones to double check to make sure that you're looking at the correct location. We can see the farm here, dial the transparency back up, and clearly see that we lie in zone 8A. If we start to zoom out, you can start seeing the fingers of 8B, and these specifics could be due to exposure, wind patterns, low-lying areas, and a host of other things we're going to take a look at in a little bit. If we zoom further out, you'll see that this area covers everything from 5A to 9B. So if we're going to use every tool available to us as growers, more weather stations equal more accurate data, which may lead to decisions of growing out one variety over another during your planning sessions. The map should act as a guide, but not an absolute when making growing decisions. Other factors such as available light, soil composition, rainfall, temperature allowances and manipulation like frost blankets and hoop houses, duration of exposure to cold and wind or wind chill, relative humidity, pest and wildlife pressure, disease management, and crop selection all play a role in crop success. However, without vigilance and care from the farmer, crops can suffer. These maps and last frost date maps are tools, but the only thing that can really guarantee success is trial and error and time in the field. So now let's take a look at where to find the map and how to use it. First, go to planthardiness.ars.usda.gov. Next, type in your zip code or farm address in the search bar. In this example, we're going to use where Bootstrap Farmers Warehouse is in Paris, Texas. That's in Lamar County. And then we can zoom in right about where the warehouse is. If we go to the map layers on the left, we can increase and decrease the plant hardiness zones just to make sure that we're looking precisely at where our location is designated by the blue pin. If we scroll back out, we can see that we're lying right in at 8B and there's a difference between the north side and the south side of town. The Bootstrap Farmer Warehouse is in zone 8B and we can expect to hit temperatures at 15 to 20 degrees Fahrenheit. That doesn't mean that we are not going to anticipate an occasional freeze of zero to negative five degrees as the winter goes along. And I'm just going to throw this in real quick because we're going to talk about it later. 
but you can also look at your last frost date at the NOAA website at climate.gov. If we go back to the Portland example, you can see that that area is going to range from January 16th through 31st through May 31st. That's a pretty wide range in a short area, but keep in mind there's a lot of high elevation, plus it's on the coast. So these high and low areas are going to have vastly different temperature ranges. Using this tool, along with the plant hardiness zone map, you can dial in not only the crop selection, but when you're going to transplant those crops outside. In the Paris, Texas example, most of the area around us is March 16th through the 30th, but the area immediately around Paris is March 1st through 15th, with areas close by as late as April and as early as the last part of February. I'm also including Denver in this example. Again, the continental divide, high elevation, coming out of the mountains, onto the beginning of the plains, a bunch of different weather patterns in one area gives you a last frost date of May 1st through the end of May. And where all this is going to start coming into play is seed selection. As you go through your trusted seed suppliers, take a look at the crop descriptions. They're going to let you know whether a particular crop can handle a little bit more heat or a little bit more cold. They're not really going to dial in the temperature range. They're for sure going to dial in the germination, which should help you with seed starting and if you want to know a little bit more about seed germination temperatures, we have that in the link below in that we talk about when to use seed starting heat mats or not. Once you start looking at your crops and learning about their attributes, you can also type in list of seeds for your zone and your zone planting schedule. You're going to see a lot of information there, but that's all part of the planning fun. Once you know your zone, once you know your frost dates, once you select your seeds, you can start working on your schedule as to when to start those seeds inside and when to move them out. Now let's talk a little bit about downloads. In the download section, you can click on your area and then you can download a plant hardiness zone map by state, sometimes region. It's going to give you a standard resolution of 150 dpi or dots per inch or 300 dpi. The higher resolution is great for printing in more detail. On the download page, one cool thing that I liked was hillshade or no hillshade lines. This map illustrates hillshade, and so if you look in real close, especially around the mountainous and valley regions, you see a lot more detail. The non-hillshade takes away that topography, and here's a side-by-side -side of both. Knowing that you have hillshade or not may severely affect microclimates within those zones, as you may not get as much usable daylight as somebody else in that same area. Now, I want to revisit the Denver area again because it's such an extreme. So the city itself is hanging right in there at 6A. So the average winter temperature is negative 10 to negative 5. So again, Denver proper, zone 6B, and just outside of town, we're moving through the 5s, the 4s, and into zone 3. Zone 3 is going to be at that thin air, top of the mountain, high wind areas, and depending on how far you crunch down, your farm may fall in between those two fingers, spanning zone 3 and zone 4. In this example, locations along Highway 40 can easily span four different growing zones. And folks, this is not a reason to panic. If we look at our planting on a bell curve, selecting the right crops and planting and actually doing the work, you're going to get something. But proper plant selection may mean the difference between a smaller yield of smaller plants, a little bit bigger yield, or the very optimal growing conditions for that specific variety planted at the right time and harvested in succession. The longer you farm, the more you'll be able to adapt to yields at full production versus beginning in the end of the season whenever yields start to decline. Bootstrap farmer's advice, if this is your first year growing, detailed market evaluations should always be your first step in deciding what crops to bring to market. Once your buyers tell you what they want, you can start researching crop varieties and ordering seeds. For home gardeners, this means asking your family what they will and won't eat. Once your crops are decided, and planned by season, talk to a trusted seed source and read the seed labels to determine if their recommendations are a good fit. Commercial seed suppliers have local reps with intimate familiarity with local nuances. This is also why it's important to build a local network of growers to see what's worked for them. The plant hardiness zone map is a great starting point, but remember to consider available light, soil composition, rainfall, temperature allowances, duration of cold, wind, humidity, pest and wildlife pressure, disease, and again, your crop selection to the actual amount of work and effort some crops may need. We like to combine all of that to think about using the map in a part of a three-step process to starting seeds and planting. Ask your market their needs. Talk to the people who are going to eat your produce and narrow down which crops to grow. With the help of the USDA Plant Hardiness Zone Map, pick crops that fall within your cold hardiness rating. Next, use NOAA's interactive map to find your average date of the last spring frost. Depending on your succession plan or the size of your grow, 
That'll help you determine how many plants to start and when to start them to allow enough time to up-pot. If you want to know more about up-potting, check out the next video. And if you found this helpful, please like and subscribe and leave a comment below. We want to know what you're thinking and we want to help you with any questions that you may have as you're starting next year. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.